Today, there's a threat to the existence of marriage. When you say there's a threat, it means there's a risk. There's that possibility that our marriage may not stand the test of time. And it is already happening in our contemporary time. You will see that it is not only outsiders that are left behind. Even the church of God is not spared. You know, right in our own time, you've seen even pastors whose marriages cannot stand the test of time. We've seen people, and it's almost like divorce, you know, separation, and a lot sort of things that before now you will not hear has become the order of the day. What this means is that there is a risk that the purpose for which God has instituted marriage may not be achieved. Because a threat is a risk. There's a risk that the plan and purpose of God for marriage may not be achieved. It also means that it is possible that there is a deviation from the expected outcome of marriage based on the plan and purpose of God. It means that you can have variation from the divine purpose of God for your marriage. It means that marriage can go through a phase that you can almost call a volatility or an unstable stage. You understand? But because God remains the same, it's like Jesus Christ that was in the ship with the disciples. Even when there was storm of life, he said, peace be still. Is that not? That same God is still alive today and is able to give peace to our marriages. And I know that he will do so in the mighty name of Jesus. You need to understand, number one, there are so many vices or so many things that have gone wrong, so many perversions that we have seen today. And what are some of those things? I think the pastor that preached in the first time, first service has mentioned them. Number one, there's separation going on now. And you will see that couples will rather live apart when they cannot cope. You've had things like we have irreconcilable differences and all of that. Number two, there are cases, and so many of them, of marital infidelity or unfaithfulness. And God said, marriage is honorable in all, and the bed undefiled. But what monger and adulterers, God will what? God will judge. You need to understand very well that one of the things you have to run away from is if, if in the infidelity in the place of marriage. The Bible says, for this reason, shall what? Shall a man leave his mother and what? And father, and cleave unto his what? And cleave unto his wife. Whatever God has joined together, let no man put what? Asunder. That is the plan and the divine purpose of God. And we have a mandate to ensure that whatever we need to do, we keep that mandate without what? Without separation. So avoid marital infidelity. I think the pastor that again preached during the first service, he, he, I think he dwelled on that. You have to make sure that as much as possible, once you are married, you stick to your spouse. This is the plan and the purpose of God. You know? And then there's so many perversions about marriage. We talk about incest. Some of you must have heard of what you call LGBTIQ. There's lesbianism, there's gay, there's bisexual. Some say they are transgender. Some people say they are, they are, there's intersex, there's questioning, and all sorts of things. Things that before now, you will not hear. And there are quite people in our own contemporary time that are quite comfortable with such things. Oh, we're married, but I mean, we're not married, we're just partners. And it's almost like if the church is not careful, the society has bought into it. And it's almost becoming the norm. But to the extent that this is not the plan and purpose for God, it cannot, be cause the, it cannot become what? The norm. Because whatever is not of God, I can tell you, whatever God has not done, you cannot find peace there. It cannot be everlasting. It will be short-lived because it is not of God. The Bible says, any tree that my father has not planted will be what? Will be uprooted. And I pray that for as many in a contemporary time have bought into this misleading of the devil that God will reverse this situation in Jesus' name. Yes. I, you all know a popular musician who happened to born, be born uh, into a silver spoon family. You know, the father quite educated, a legal luminary. And then he was sent abroad to go and study. And unfortunately, you know, he got caught up with the modern world. And then all of a sudden, so many things changed about him. You know the person I'm talking about. Some of you understand. And he's in his 60s or so now. If you see him, dresses like, you know, he's a female and all that. His father almost rejected him. And of course, after some time, the man just accepted him that this is just the way this person is and there's nothing they could do about it. And recently, I was reading online again that his own daughter is now what? His own daughter is now, you know, a lesbian. And you know, I'm like, look, anything that is not of God, I don't know what that generation, our own generation, will then be again. 
That is why we have to be careful the kind of things that we do. That's why the Bible says, bring up a child in the way that he should go. When he's old, he will not what? He will not depart from it. Either you like it or not, as parents, we have a role to play in bringing up our children in the way of the Lord. We have our part to play. Do your bit and commit them to the hand of God. Whatever is wrong today that you don't address, you may think that you have got away with it, but it's a problem that is waiting, you understand, for you in the future. And I pray that whatever be the thing that is wrong in our own foundation, that God will address it himself. And it will bring peace and joy to our homes in Jesus' name. Today we talk about dissolution of marriages. And that is at an alarming rate. Some people, as soon as they are almost getting married, the marriage is also being what? Dissolved. And we've had of domestic violence. You know, and all of that. So it is not, uh, I mean, there's no controversy about this that there are problems in marriages today. But for me as a person, I don't think we should be too bothered about the problems. The problems are there anyway. And I think what should bother any one of us is what is the way forward? What is the solution? For some of us that are trying to get married now, it's so bad that people are even afraid of going into the institution. And for so many that are there, we know what we are facing, that there are enormous challenges, but there's nothing God cannot do. And I pray that God will visit each and every one of us. He will visit our homes and he will do new things in Jesus' name. You need to understand that the best way to solve the problem of marriage is to go back to the author of marriage itself. You understand? I think I've said it here before that there's, there's a man uh, who manufactured a car in the U.S. And there was somebody that had a problem with his car. And the guy struggled and struggled. He, he did not even know what the problem was and was sought just by the roadside, struggling and struggling to repair that car. And he could not do it. He was using his knowledge, his wisdom and all that. And there was an old man that was passing by the road. And he saw him struggling to resolve that problem. And the old man said, can you do this and this? And he challenged him and said, sorry, who are you? You understand? The man initially was not willing or ready to listen to him. And then maybe at a second thought, in any way, maybe like Peter in the Bible, he had struggled day and night and he could not achieve anything. Maybe wisdom told him, why don't I try what this man has said? I lose nothing. And he decided to try. Children, can you please keep quiet? God bless you in Jesus' name. He decided to try what the man has said. And immediately he did that. The car started working immediately. And he said, who are you? He said, I'm Henry Ford. I manufactured this car. Do you know that God is the author of marriage? The way to solve, the quickest and the best way to solve the problem of marriage is to go back to the author of marriage himself. And God, interestingly, has given a very simple solution to marriage, which, because of time, I have told you I won't follow the manual. I'll just give it the way it comes to me, and you can pick up whatever you want to pick up, and I pray God will help us in Jesus' name. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, let's read Ephesians 5, 22 to 25, quickly. Ephesians 5, 22 to 25, you could help. Can you help us, engineers? Ephesians 5, 22 to 25. It says, wives, submit yourselves unto your own husband as unto the Lord. Next. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church and is the savior of the body. 24. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be to their own husbands in everything. 25. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ has loved the church and gave himself what? For it. Brethren, if we all can take this home, and we're able to execute or implement this, I don't think we'll be talking about problem of marriage. How many of you agree with me? The problem or the solution to marriage is as simple as that. God has commanded the husbands to love their wives. And then he has also told the wives to submit. But I'm sure that there are so many of us here, including myself, who know these scriptures very well. So it's like, so what has he said? Has he given any solution? We all read these scriptures but what exactly is the problem? The problem is the execution of this scripture. And what is the problem? The problem also is because when God was giving us this commandment, he did not put condition there. But we have decided to make it conditional. Oh, I'm going to love my wife, but this woman is disobedient to me, does not submit to me. And you see, I've told you, number one, that that is the solution of God to, to marriage. Number two, it is a very simple solution. Number three is that you can equate this with a simple equation. A simple equation 
And one of the ways, one of the characteristics of a simple equation is that there are two variables. There's X and there's Y. And if you want to solve them, one of the ways of solving a simple equation is also an elimination method. You have to solve X and then once you derive the value of X, you slot that value in and then you automatically derive the value of what? Y. But you see, when you are solving X, what happens? You have to keep Y constant. So if you want to enjoy your home as a husband, if I want to love my wife, I have to keep constant. I don't have to make it conditional that she has to submit to me. If I can do that, I will have solved that problem. But the moment that I struggle to have the solution to the two at the same time, I will never solve that problem. I'm telling you the truth. You will never. If my wife will agree to submit to me, even when initially it looks like this man does not love him, does not love her, you understand? By keeping the other variable constant, you will see that it is possible that the, the problem is what? It's also what? Solved. So, it's a very simple solution to marriage. Husband, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself for it. And then it also says, wives, submit yourself unto your own what? Husband. Brethren, if we can obey this scripture and tell ourselves that we will stick to it. Do you know that God will do a new thing in our lives and in our marriages? How many of us believe that? You see, if a man tries, the truth is this, and that is the reason why you will see that even the very most knowledgeable people you can think of, I'm talking about the very people who are scholar, scholars, people who are erudites, they have problems with their marriages. Because your knowledge and your wisdom cannot solve the problem or the challenges of marriage. It will take us to go back to God. Who is the author of marriage to solve those problems for us? I'm telling you the truth. It takes off. That is one thing that man tries to solve himself. But the moment you try to help yourself, you can never get through. Because you just have to hold on to God. Who can do much more than you can think of? If we can make up our mind, you will realize that there is nothing God cannot do. I've told us that the, today what we're talking about is that there's threat to our marriage or what you call risk. And there's a way of managing risk. I happen to be a risk professional and I know how to manage risk. I've practiced that over the years. You know? There's what you call unexpected risk. There's what you call expected risk. Expected are very easy to manage. Expected because you know that they are going to happen. And how do you manage expected risk? Number one, you can do what you call, we make provision for expected risk. Because I know this thing is going to happen, so I can make provision for it. You shouldn't bother me. Number two, we also say that you can budget or price for an expected risk. If I know it's going to happen, let me just try and break it down. If you are a businessman here, you want to do contracts. And after looking at all your costs, part of what you do before you advise them, this is what I'm going to quote. You look at every, you price risk into your contracts. If you are going to pay for insurance, you are going to pay premium and all of those things. You will have put all of those things into the price. And then you, you say, look, this is how much I'm going to take. So you can price for risk. And then, of course, you can also, I've talked about provision, I've talked about price for risk, I've talked about budgeting for risk. You can budget for, you can plan for it. And so you can solve them. We call them expected. You know, sometimes we say they are expected losses. And either you like it or not, some of us, unfortunately, we also fail in planning for things that are expected in marriage. If you're going to go into marriage, for example, you need to understand that as a man, you have been commanded to provide for your family. The Bible says that any man that will not provide for his family is worse what than an infidel. So you can't just say you have got married and then you wake up, all of a sudden, you just realize that there will be food on the table. Let me tell you, that love is going to be short-lived when there is tension in the family. Finances, go and ask people who are, who, who are in marriage, can create serious tension in the family. So, you have to make sure that you provide properly. Make sure you take, tell yourself, how many children can I take care of? If you know you can't take care of more than one, more than two, more than three, please do so. Don't go beyond your means. Otherwise, there will be a problem. You understand? And as you get married as well, you get to understand some things about your spouse. You must be ready. You know, some things are really nothing to you. But as you get married, you realize that your wife doesn't like this, your husband doesn't like this. You make life adjustments. Not because it is sin, but sometimes, you know, some of those things we do could be irritating to the other person. And then you have to make lifetime adjustments. 
you know, of course, part of what you do in marriage is that you also pray so that your marriage will not crash. But you know what? The most difficult risk to manage is what you call unexpected risk. Unexpected risk is handled typically in two ways that I know. Number one, some people also insure for risk. You insure for it because unexpected risk means that the losses can be large enough that they can wipe you out as an organization. So what you do is to do what? Is to, is to insure for it. So that when the losses happen, somebody can bear, you know, the consequence or the liability. And then you will not have to go into extinction as an organization. So you can insure. But you see, I understand very well that the greatest form of insurance happens to also be life insurance. But have you thought about this? That the life that you insure, you know, does not even benefit from the life insurance itself. Because if I insure my life right now, at best, maybe insurance will pay me some money, will pay some money when I'm gone. And then maybe my family can benefit from it. That tells you that even insurance has its own what? Limitation. Because you, that you have insured your life, you will not be a beneficiary at the end of the day. That's number one. Number two is the way you provide for something that is unexpected. We are what you call capital. You set aside, you know, something called capital, and I will not go into that. But do you know that the greatest form of capital that you can rely on is who? Is God. That is why, having said all, brethren, if we don't have God, we can plan for everything. You can say this and all of that. You may have a good job, by the way, by the time you are getting married. There's nothing that says that one, two, three years into the marriage, you cannot lose your job. So if your decision was based on the fact that this man can provide for me, you understand? Because you are trying to edge against expected, you know, losses. You may fail at the end of the day. And that becomes a problem. There could be storm. And so when there is storm, how do you take care of it? That is why you need to hold God by the way. Because he's the only one that can take care of what? Of the unexpected. Am I communicating? He's the one that can take care of what? Of the unexpected. As I'm rounding off, I'll just say this. But you see, part of the planning for those who are single now is to make sure that before you go into it, you've thought deeply about it and you pray about it. You see, when you have prayed about it, you have peace of mind because only God knows the future. Anything can happen in the future and you have no idea what some of those things will be and you will not be able to handle it yourself. But the God that is greater than you and I, he can handle all forms of challenges, all forms of threat, all forms of risk for you. Am I communicating? And so this morning, brethren, God, number one, is the author of marriage. Number two, you have a plan to play. There are things that are expected. Go and that's why they give you counseling when you are getting married. Counseling sometimes is to take care of the expected things. Talk to married people. But you see, no matter how well you have planned for it, by the time you get into it, there will be storms of life. There will always be the unexpected. Not even the insurance of this life can help you. The only thing that can help you is the insurance of heaven. And that is God. Am I communicating? Because he is the God that can do all things. Is the God that can bring peace to your home and to your family. Is the one that can help you in the training of your children. Such that there are children that are brought up in good homes. Unfortunately, some of them, they still go their way. How do you explain that one? The parents have done everything they need to do. They are very prayerful. They are everything. It's not like they are not living right. The devil is still there waiting for us at the corner. But the Bible says, finally, that the weapons of our warfare, they are not carnal. But they are mighty through Christ to pulling down every stronghold of the enemy. And every thought that what? that exalts itself above the knowledge of Christ. Brethren, this morning, if you can make God the author and the finisher of your faith and your marriage, do you know that you will go through storms of life? You will pass through water and you will not be drowned. Do you know the Bible says you are going to pass through fire and you will not be what? You will not be burnt. Because there is a God that you have who does not fail. I want you to be on your feet this morning and talk to God. Because he's the insurer of insurers. You know, even insurance people, interestingly, talk about reinsurance. So an insurance problem company can also have problems. So they talk about reinsurance. And then, so I don't know what the reinsurance people will do. Maybe they talk about re-reinsurance. And then the bus stop is God, who is the greatest insurer. You can speak to God this morning that you are the greatest insurer of life. Come and insure my marriage in the mighty name of Jesus. Come and make my marriage to be secured. Come, O oh Lord, and take care of the unexpected. Come and take care of the storm of life. Because you are the God that does not fail. My Father and my God, come, O oh Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. Very quickly, if you are here this morning, you have not submitted your life to Christ. You understand? I fear for you. 
to be honest with you. You see, interestingly, there are unbelievers that have perfected the management of the expected challenges of life. And so it is not impossible that you will see unbelievers who don't even come to church like you and I. Everything seems to be right about their marriage. But let me tell you, mark my word, there can be unexpected challenges. There can be storm of life. It can wipe the best of us away. If you are here this morning, you know you need God to be your insurer. Do you please come forward as we pray together? If you know you have not accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, I have just 30 seconds. Please come forward. If you know that you need God to be your capital in life, you need him to be the one that you can always draw on in the time of need because it's the one that is the well that does not run dry. It's the one that says that well, that water of life that I will give you, that water will not run dry. Could you please come forward? I'll count 10. And if there's nobody, I will assume that we are all in him. And then we'll just pray. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Interesting, we are all in him. Can we just take, tell God that God come and be my insurer? Come and be my security in marriage. You are the God that does not fail. Come and be my capital. Come and be the insurer that will reinsure, oh Lord, my insurance. Come and be the one that will reinsure the reinsurance of my life. Almighty God, you are the God that does not fail. Come and help me. Come into my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come into my life. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. Come in today, come in to stay. Come into my life, Lord Jesus. I want you to say, come into my family and we round up. Let him come into your family. Come into my family, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you this morning for the word that you have spoken to us. I pray, Lord, you will come and be our insurer in the name of Jesus. That despite, oh Lord, whatever is happening around us, the new normal or whatever, Daddy, come and be our God in the name of Jesus. Come and protect us, oh God. Come and guide us and come and guard, oh Lord, Father, our families in Jesus' name. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. God bless you. You may have your seats.